Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. And my goodness, the chill factor went down overnight and it's a wee bit cold. <laughs> Not too bad. How is it where you are? Are you in the Northern Hemisphere and you're looking forward to a nice summer? Good morning and welcome to Recovery to Remission, where today we're going to talk about how do we know if we should stay or if we should go when we're in a relationship with a narcissist. There's no easy answer, is the answer. <laughs> it's going to be different for all of us, but the good news is we do have a set of building blocks. That's what we'll call them, building blocks. Now, if you're here this morning, feel free to say good day. And for all of you watching, thank you for joining in. It's so important that we not only have this information available to us, but we're also able to share it with others who are still our silent majority because mental health doesn't get talked about enough or, you know, people don't feel confident or comfortable enough to share. So we really need to be able to share it around too. Now, with narcissism, narcissism there's a lot in the media today and a lot going around the world. And the important part to remember is that it's multifaceted. It's not just cut and dried. So someone can have narcissistic personality disorder and, it, you know, they they really are sociopaths, all right, or psychopaths, and they do intentionally set out to do things that uh, are cruel, very, very cruel. And, you know, involve gaslighting, involve, you know, basically involves screwing with your head. Then there are those who have narcissistic tendencies because they've learnt them coming up in their families of origin. Okay. Oh, maybe it's not quite so cold. Um, so you need to be able to sit down and take a deep breath and say, is this a learnt pattern? Now, either way, first of all, the first way is if they're psychopathic or a sociopath, you, you just don't have a choice. It's not going to change and you need to get out. It's that simple. For the sake of you, the sake of your children, you need to get out. If, on the other hand, it's the learnt responses from going, growing up in a family, then you have the opportunity to have things change. And there are programs available in today's world for those that are willing to do their work. So usually we find if we're married to a narcissist, then we've got codependents and both of us need to do the work. Then that's when the second crunch point comes in. Are they prepared to do the work? So those of us with codependents, uh, I've yet to come across somebody with codependents who doesn't want to do the work. Uh, but I have come across people who do want to do the work and then don't want to put the effort in. So, you know, it does go both ways. Uh, I've yet to come across somebody with narcissistic tendencies learnt from the family who wants to do the work. So you've got to be aware that if somebody's doing the work, it's going to have to be done at a heart level. It's not logical. And they have to be willing to do very, very courageous work, all right? It is doable. And like I said, there are programs out there in order to help them. It's just known that unless they're doing the work, they, that there is no hope of change for you. Now, for me, uh, my bigger question was, not just about myself, but my bigger question was, was the impact on my then young children. So those who follow me know that my children are all adults now, but I had to sit back and over a very extended period of time, uh, over a couple of years for me actually, I had to sit back without the information that we had today and I had to learn as much as I could in order to build a different foundation for my children and I and then make the decision so and have those tough conversations with their father. Uh, are you prepared to seek help about your anger, um, your irrational stubbornness and so on? And they can say yes, but then not do anything about it. 
and it's to their detriment, unfortunately, because outwardly they appear happy to everybody, but internally behind closed doors, we know that that's not what's happening for them. So it's very tough. Uh, emotionally, it's really, really hard because they don't want to have communication and compromise. They don't want to sit down and actually work through things like an adult or two adults would, should and could. <laughs> so that makes it tough. But for us, what we really need to do is build into our lives what we're going to do, what, what the decision will look like that we have to make. Because remember, if they're not making a decision to seek help, they're actually making a decision not to want to grow and go forward with their marriage as well. Because it's not just about the mother and father. This is about the impact that it has on the children. Now, just stepping up into the bigger vision, yes, it's hard to be a single parent. Absolutely, it's mind-boggling because you play two roles. And unless you've done it, honestly, it's definitely one of those things that uh, you don't really, you don't ever want to do on your own. It's not something you choose. It's some, uh, well, for me, it wasn't something that I chose. It was something that I had to make a decision, big picture, what was healthier for my kids. Was it healthier to stay in a home where anger and other factors were being modelled to them? Or was it healthier to go, right, this is going to be tough, but I want my kids to be emotionally healthy and resilient for the rest of their lives. And in the end, I had to build into making that decision. And now that they're adults and we've been through so much, we've been through divorce, we've been through the death of their dad, <laughs> we've had to move house so many times and on and on. But now that they see the bigger picture in the world, they all thank me for having the courage to do what needed to be done in order that they didn't grow up and perpetuate the anger and unhealthy stuff that was going on that had come down from generations before as well. So build into your decisions. Uh, you may find that you're doing it on your own, but I don't want you to do it on your own, okay? Hook into a community of people around you have close people who are willing to walk with you through the decisions that you have to make. I can't recommend a community for you in particular because this is global. What I can tell you is what worked for me. I have a wonderful church community who have walked with me through all the times when I couldn't even talk. Okay? <laughs> so... Find a community that suits you, where you feel comfortable and you feel at home and your decisions are supported and your family is supported, your children are supported as well. All right, It's important that we do this in community. We don't do these things alone All right, because it's hard enough. All right? It's hard enough having to process your broken dreams and the grief when you have to become a single parent, then it is, um, and doing it on your own is just so, so hard, all right? Take time out. As you make each decision, take time out to either pray or meditate or whatever your spiritual practice is, take time out to know that even though it's hard, you've built into you not just the resilience, because when we've experienced complex trauma from our childhood, we have a lot of ability to spring back. What we need to do is be willing and able to go, I'm not going to isolate, all right? Because the um, marriage breakup, the partnership breakup can be very triggering, it can also be wanting us to isolate without us being conscious of it and getting into the old mindset of 
I'm just going to do this. I can do this. I can manage on my own. That comes from how our brain was wired in our childhood. We don't need to do that as adults. What we need to do to, as adults is refute that and say, no, I don't need to do this on my own. I need to do this in community. Okay? So just build that really deep awareness within yourself of when that's happening for you, where it's saying, nobody understands. I can't do this. I'm just going to have to do it on my own. And dispute it. Dispute the automatic thoughts. Rewatch the video on automatic thoughts so that you can set yourself up for success. Um, sometimes we have to make the decision of whether we want to be a spouse or we want to be a parent. And for me, we of course we want both. You know, we didn't go into this thinking that it was going to be uh, a nightmare um, or you know, that the other person wasn't going to get on and do the growth work. Well, I certainly didn't, that's for sure. I thought that we'd go through this together and work it out together. Uh, but for me, in the end, I had to choose that I wanted to be a parent more than I wanted to be a spouse with everything that came with that because I wanted, I had a bigger picture in mind that my children would break not just their father's generational stuff, but my generational stuff as well. I wanted to equip them to be able to do that. So I wasn't left with much of a choice, but I did make the best of it so that my children are fully conscious of what's gone before them. We talk about everything and they are fully aware of where to go from here as a parent, even though none of them have kids yet, they're all adults, but they understand how important it is that we don't keep raising generations of sameness because we don't want our families to be unhealthy. With 70% of people who've done the ACEs study being white, middle class and educated, then we need to be willing to take a good look at what we can do to change the generations that come after us as well. And we sit in a very privileged position where we're the first generation that's had the information that we've got that science backs it, okay? So science now backs all the neurobiology, the epigenetics, and they just continue to find more and more and more. So it takes a lot of brave to stand up and say no, I want for my children a better life than what I've had and the generations that have gone before me have. But I know long term it's going to be worth it. Okay? Communication is vital. Absolutely vital. If you're not getting the communication from your spouse, spouse, sorry about that, we need to communicate with our children as well. Obviously, age appropriate communication. So as my children grew, I was able to share with them more and more. I didn't share the stuff about um, what went on with their dad and I, per se, only as it, you know, related to them. Um, and I raised them that they would always know that they would love their dad. Okay, no matter what his behaviour was, you will love your dad because that's inside of you. So no matter what's happened, when we let them know that they will always love their other parent, then that lets them know that it's okay to say, well, that parent's behaviour wasn't acceptable. It wasn't good. It wasn't good behaviour to act like that. And that way, when they move into their life, then they're always coming from that space of love. Well, we're human. <laughs> but they're coming from that space of love and they're able to raise their kids a whole lot differently. I say to my kids, look, I wanted something different from you than what the generations before me had. I've ha I have to do my work all the time. Uh, and I want you, and I equip them to know how to do their work too. So the communication is vital. Otherwise, if you don't have the communication, then there will be no change. You'll have left for what reason? We want change and it is hard, hard work, all right?
but from my experience, the kids, they've grown up and said thank you for all the hard work you've done. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's that's the biggest gift of all is that you've come through the hard times together and we can all say, great, we've done it together. And we have a beautiful, tiny, close family because we know that each of us are doing something bigger with our lives as well. And we all do something different. Make sure that you reach out for support. Whatever that support looks like, get support and don't let the complex PTSD isolate you. Okay, and get professional help. Before you even think about going, get professional help. Especially if you've got codependence and you're living with somebody who's narcissistic, it's really important that you get professional help so you understand and can have a clear mind about the direction you're headed in. Um, I hope that helps with helping you to build some really solid, firm foundations as to where you want to go, how to start with the process, write everything down that you need to do because getting it out, we can be very visual learners. Writing everything out each day does help, all right? It helps to clarify things. And if you're not sure if you've been gaslighted or not, one of the things that you can do is only use email to communicate about important things because then you've got a record of what's going on. Uh, I had to do that in my second marriage because the gaslighting was phenomenal and I had to say no we have to stick to email so that I knew that I could go back and reread what was being said and that it was black and white it wasn't a case of oh I've misunderstood again all right it's hard to do it's hard to put those boundaries in place but it is necessary for us so that we keep on track with what's happening and we build our own confidence to have the ability to make the steps and to build into the steps that we need to make. I hope that helps today. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel welcome to leave them down below and I will absolutely get to you and reply as soon as I possibly can. Have a gorgeous day or a gorgeous evening. Blessings and dreams.